Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, how are you? This is Alex Bennett and this is The Ramble. And it goes from now until um, midnight, Eastern Daylight Time, or Eastern Standard Time. You know, I, I, I just should say Eastern Time no matter what, and then, you know, the people will know what I'm talking about. Anyway, we got a lot of stuff to do tonight, a lot of stuff to talk about a little bit later with our citizens panel. Tonight, we're going to start something special. Um, a few weeks back, uh, I managed to get uh, our good friend, um, Jack Garfine, into the studio once again uh, to sit down for another hour and a half worth of interviews, of which I will chop them up into 30-minute segments, and we'll play them over the next couple of nights. And, uh, well... Uh, why don't we just get going, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, here is the beginning of our interviews with Jack Garfine. Ladies and gentlemen, this is part two of our interview with Jack Garfine. Now, part one took place many, many months ago, but here he is back in our studio. But there are ten parts. There, there, are, there are so many parts to your <laughs> life, Jack, that it's amazing, that it is absolutely amazing the different parts to your life because your life uh first we had the the part of uh, your young life where you were in concentration camps 11 of them and then now you come to the united states how did you get to the united states from europe did you oh how did i get was it well it's it's quite a story yeah because um and i didn't understand some of it yeah. Until about uh, until about four months ago. Oh well, that's a little long yeah. in your life. When they were doing a documentary. Yeah. Because what happened was that first, because my father yeah. was one of the founders of Zionism mm -hmm. in 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 Czechoslovakia. Yeah. And he tried to warn the Jews to to get out and. He also was in the underground mm -hmm. getting the Polish Jews through Turkey to Palestine, okay? Yeah. And my mother and he had later a terrible fight because she thought that he was thinking more about rescuing the Jews than his children and his family. Yeah. That he put all his energy in, in there. Yeah. yeah. And finally, had, well, what happened was um, I had a very happy childhood right in a sense well, well we kind of went through all that what we went through all oh, that we did. before so, yeah what i want to get to is we ended up with you getting out of the camps you wound up in uh, i think it was sweden or norway sweden. Yeah, yeah sweden yeah yeah now i'm uh, how did you get to the united states oh okay okay i got it yeah so what happened was i had an uncle in the united states yeah <laughs> it's very funny but you now, know mind you everybody uh, he, his family was wiped out in the camps except for you you were the sole survivor of your family yeah, yeah, correct? Yeah, of my immediate family. Of your immediate family yeah so you had an uncle in the United States yeah I had an uncle in the United States and he he what happened was I did a performance in Sweden did I tell you about that no so uh, I was one of the youngest. There was another boy my age, mm -hmm. a little younger, I think. And they were putting, he wanted to put on a kind of a show for the Swedish people mm -hmm. and the Swedish and all the embassies. Yeah. Outdoors was a nice place. He set up a stage. And I auditioned, auditioned. I, I went up and wanted to be in it. Right. And it was between me and the little boy. Uh -huh. And, uh, I got the part, which is the part of a, what's called a pupil who took care of the capo's house. He cleaned it, yeah. cleaned his shoes, and as a consequence, he didn't have to go out to work. Was this your first acting part? 
No, no. Uh, I, uh, I had to act. My father yeah. would put on shows oh, okay. about Zionism and all that. When you were a kid. But I had big fights with him. Yeah. Because uh, I kept, I remember the one time I kept, he kept trying to get me to be natural and easy. And I felt like I was an actor. <laughs> and so uh, I would say, and the clouds were over the trees and the wind came. And my father would say, please. Just say the word yeah. simply. Yeah. So I thought, okay. He kept arguing with me. I felt, okay. So in the preparation, in the rehearsal, yeah. I would do it his way, and everything yeah. was fine. Let's get to how you got. You got to the United States. Your uncle brought you to the United States. Yeah, but it's yeah. connected. It's connected. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what happened was that that I did all that in the rehearsal, but then for the show. Yeah. Boy, I said, then the clouds went, then the twin came, and a big, and so, oh, and my sister who was in the show, yeah, she listened to my father, she was very simple, so after the show they said, oh, Yankush, that was my name, Yankush, you're the real actor, my sister, she's not, she, was just, she was just like here, no, just like yeah. a little girl. But you are really an actor. Yeah. And I got all my friends and all the people in me, the great actor. So during the show, what happened was that the uh, guy who played the capo mm -hmm. didn't this, do this. This was in Sweden. This was the play in, in Sweden. Sweden yeah, about, it was yeah. for the Swedish people yeah. to see us. It was a kind of a pageant show, you know. Yeah. And so uh, he didn't smoke during the rehearsals. You know? Yeah. Uh, and suddenly, during the show, he lights up a cigarette and it smokes. And at one point, he threw the cigarette away for a cigarette in a concentration camp. You could buy the Empire State Building, <laughs> right? So with my right foot, I pushed the cigarette to my sho other shoe, covered it with a cleaning, with a mm -hmm. cloth, and then stuck it into the shoe, right? And suddenly, because when that happened, that became so real to me. Yeah. You know, that I, this is what, right. I, what I did. And what happened was, when I, after, when I was leaving the exit, I got a big hand from the audience. So I thought, oh yeah, because I'm a kid, I went through the camps, that's why they're giving me a big hand. But when it came to the curtain calls, you know, everybody got a, me, woo, big hand. And I thought, well, again, because they're giving me a hand because I'm a kid, you know, right. and went through the camp. Yeah. And so the, the guy from the American embassy, not the ambassador, but the second in charge, came up to me and said to me, uh, do you have any relatives in the United States? Well. You know, uh, uh, and where are they? So, you know, everybody had an uncle in the United States. Right, exactly. But I said, yes, I have an uncle in Chicago. I didn't want to say New York. Everybody said New York, but it's Chicago. So he said, okay, well, this man, who's, by the way, card I have uh, somewhere, I still, I kept it. Uh, he went and took an ad in the Herald Tribune, mm -hmm. that this boy who survived the camps is, you know, in Sweden, in this and this town. And uh, then a friend of my father's, mm -hmm. one of his best friends. Um, what do you need? Kleenex. A little Kleenex? Here. Let me give it. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. There you go. Saw the ad. Yeah. And he went and got in touch with my uncle in New York. Yeah and said, Yankush, that was my name, survived. And so, he, my uncle, <laughs> not the nicest of people, right? <laughs> he made arrangements, supposedly, for me to come out to the United States. Yeah. And everybody envied me in, in the camp, the other kids who were there. Yeah. Oh, you're going to America. And, and you know, and uh, so I, uh, I sort of started also to have images 
of being, you know, in the United States because I was, f I was definitely wanted to go to Palestine mm -hmm. to fight for Israel, my right. state. So, okay, uh, they arranged for me to get on a boat, the first five, among the first five people to come to the United States. And uh, because there was no passenger ship yet. Right. So this was a merchant ship, you know, mm -hmm. and there were five of us. And I used to uh, go out and watch the waves and the sea. And, and then I found a book, a little notebook that I kept there in which I wrote down my father's birthday, my mother's, my sister's. I kept thinking about them, you know. Yeah. And, um, and so then I was looking forward to seeing the Statue of Liberty. Mm -hmm. But what happened was there was a huge storm <laughs> oh, no. in New York. <laughs> so we ended in Baltimore. Oh, boy. And I got out in Baltimore. I saw all these black people. I thought we were in Africa. Because I never, in New York, there was only one time, and there was a, not New York, in uh, Sweden, yeah. in Göteborg, there was a rumor that there was a boat, American boat with black people. I had never seen any. So we rushed, like all the kids rushed to the thing, to look at, to look at the black to people. To look at black people. Yeah. 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 And so, uh, and then what happened was, uh, uh, there were three guys at a desk, there was no no uh, real setup. Uh, three guys at a desk, I said, what's your name? My name, Jakub Garfer. Jak right, I wrote uh, Jack. They, <laughs> Jack. They said Jack, and I yeah. said, okay, Jack. And then they said, where are you going? I said, New York, my uncle. What's the address? River Cedar Drive. River Cedar Drive. <laughs> River <laughs> Drive. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, anyway, they said my uncle could. They, oh, there was a man from Ohio yeah. there, and he said that my uncle couldn't come because of the snowstorm. So he was there for me and for the other three people as well, four people. Yeah. And uh, and so uh, and then he said your uncle will meet you at Thirty Fourth Street. Uh, this is a key point in my life which I didn't understand until about maybe six, seven months ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because what happened was um, I arrived, oh, when I was on the bus by the way, mm -hmm. I was a kid, I was 15, I ran to the back, you know, window to see, to see the town. Mm -hmm. When the driver started to yell at me, yell, I didn't know what he was saying. But the guy from higher said, no, 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 you can't go there. That's black people only. Oh, wow. And I thought, wow, from Auschwitz to this. To this, <laughs> yeah. I said, oh, my God, what's going on here? Anyway, so I arrive at, at 34th Street Station. My uncle is there. He takes me to his apartment. Now something I have not understood about my life. I have felt constantly here in the United States a kind of a wall, no matter what, a hollowness mm -hmm. between me and the other people. And particularly I felt the Jews who I felt should be close to me, mm -hmm. but except for individuals, right. generally speaking, I felt a distant, mm -hmm. you know, and I only understood that, but I said, because the, the, the uh, French are doing a documentary on me. Yeah. And when I told them the story, they said, hey, could we go to that apartment, the first apartment where you came to? And I said, yes, I know where it is, but I don't know who's there. Might not saying. be there anymore. The, so it was Yitzhak Perlman's apartment, and his son now had it. Oh, really? And when they asked him, he said, oh, I'd be delighted to see Jack Arvine. You yeah. Know, so, Anyway, yeah. I, uh, I, I went there, and I walked into the apartment, and it, it wasn't, the rooms were the same, but things were changed. And he said, well, where, where were you? I said, well, I slept on the couch. 
He said, you slept on a couch? I said, yeah, but it was only for a couple of months. Then they put me into a rooming house. Mm. And um, he said, put you in a rooming house. I was 15. Right? Yeah. And I said, yeah, that's... Uh, and I suddenly understood something amazing. That, and then I understood the photographs. I have pictures when I'm in Sweden. I look great, heroic, because in Sweden, I was a kid who went through the camps and survived. Yeah. I was invited to dinners, to this. Yeah. Oh, it was great. I realized when I arrived here at the railroad station, my uncle hugged me, he didn't even kiss me, you know? And I felt, now I understood it. Now I understood I was a refugee. See? Yeah. I wasn't the kid who did. Okay, how did you get from this to into the theater? What? Uh, how did you get from this point into the theater in New York? <laughs> because you were pretty young when you got into the theater yeah. in New York, right? Well, this is what happened. As I told you once, the Kafka story that I did, mm -hmm. where it says, the reason I did it because I found the epilogue, mm -hmm. which said that human beings are horrible, but not individuals. Humanity is terrible, but individuals are very great. This is one of your favorite quotes. You yeah. have well, said this to me life. time and time again, yeah. and, I, and, I, and I, it's a valuable statement. Yeah, 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 because here too, yeah. What happened was there was a Jewish child care association and uh, my uncle wanted to put me into a Hasidic yeshiva because they would pay the bill. I could sleep there and at least I had the nerve to say, no, I'm not going there. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. And so the Jewish child care, I made some speeches for the United Jewish Appeal and I refused to take money. I said, whatever you pay, give it to the people, in Europe, to my friends in yeah. Europe, you know? And my uncle hated that. Yeah. He felt I should take the money. Wait, wait, let's get, let's get you into the theater. Let's find out how yeah, this yeah, yeah. happened. But what happened was that uh, um, um, is the Jewish Child Care Association said, uh, I told them I wanted to be an actor. Yeah. Jack, they tried to talk to me, Jack, please. You, okay, you can act, but you have to have a job. You have to go to a school where you can get a job so you can have work. I said, I, I know, but I want to be, an be an actor. So they, they were amazing. So they said, okay, the summer came up in 46, mm -hmm. right? And so they said, okay, you know what? We're going to send you to a summer camp with other kids. You put on a show, we'll come and see it, and then we'll decide what we, we're going to do. Mm -hmm. So I said, fine. So I sent them to a very nice camp. I learned how to play baseball. You saw I got the award. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I put on a show. I acted and directed it with other people. Mm -hmm. And... Um, they came up to see it, the board. And, um, and after the show, they said, okay, we'll do whatever we can, Jack, to get you to go into the theater, right? Yeah. So they made an appointment for me with Mr. Strauss, who was the head of the Atomic Energy Commission. Ah. And I had a meeting with him in his office. What does he have to do with theater? What? Yeah. What, what does he have to his do with Wall theater? Street, the office is half your apartment. Yeah. There. So he said to me, you're, you're just talking to you, you're a very bright boy, but Jack, you have to have a job or a career, something you want to do aside from theater. You can do that on the side, but you have to go to a school and a place and concentrate. I said, no, Mr. Strauss, I, I want to be an actor. That's what I want to be. That's what I want to do. And I applied to the biggest dramatic school where Brando went and uh, uh, all the big Eli Wallach, big stars. And uh, they said to me that I applied for a scholarship. 
That was at the Actors Studio. No, no. Oh, no. Dramatic Workshop. Oh, really? Okay. Irvin Piscotter uh -huh. was the head of it. And I applied, and I knew I had to pay $1,200 for the first part. It's like 12000 today, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I said to Mr. Strauss, if you could know that I had to pay that, that I, if I didn't get the scholarship, I would have to pay that money, but I will repay it eventually, you know. Mm -hmm. He said, Jack, it's a question of repayment. I'm just concerned about your future. He's like, it's like this is kind of like um, a, a father who says to his son, you know, uh, no, uh, I, I know you want to be in the theater, but yeah. you've got to do something that will make you yeah, a yeah, living. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So uh, f finally he said, all right. He called the secretary and he said, give Mr. Garfine a check for $1,200, right? And I said, Mr. Strauss, I will repay it. Don't worry about repayment. Just do whatever you have to do. So I auditioned. Mm -hmm. And Piscotter sees my audition. He didn't know my background about the camp. Right. I get the scholarship. Wow. And I'm the youngest for that year, you mm -hmm. know. And so uh, I went and gave the check back. And Mr. Strauss said, no, no, keep it. Put it in the bank. It's your money. Mr. Strauss, please <laughs> help somebody else. Help some other kid in Europe who may need it to. I, yeah. I'm, I'm fine. And it's first year. And he even said, well, if you have a problem the second year, you come to me. I said, I, 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 I hope I will not, but okay. Right. Thank yeah. you. And Okay. So I got into the dramatic workshop. I was the youngest again, and uh, Piscotta you know, was a great director and um, revolutionized the theater. And here, they didn't have anything to do with him. So he now, actually, now, you say that there were people who had gone through the school, like people who had gone through the school like Eli Wallach and Marlon yeah. Brando. Was that, that was previous to you, right? right. You were saying Brando. Yeah. And Eli Wallach yeah. and actors like that had gone through that studio previous to you. Before you did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, uh, Eli was there. Oh, he was there. Brando, I only saw once, but, you know. Yeah. And anyway, so, and all the teachers, mm -hmm. uh, Herbert Berghoff, Stella Adler. Oh, wow. They were all teaching there. They were on the staff. Piscata organized it with the new school. This is like going to the Harvard of drama. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And so what happened was that uh, um, I did. I directed and I acted, and uh, some of the people never forgave me, like Rod Steiger, who was in my class, mm -hmm. who every time I talked about what I was directing, uh, directed, you. Stupid ass, you should have just stayed with acting. Your performance in school was one of the best I've ever seen, and others yeah. did the same. But I had, every time I would go out professionally trying to get a job as an actor, my accent. Mm -hmm. I had an accent, so I couldn't couldn't do it, you know. Right. And all my friends tried to say, fuck them, they just keep going, you know. But yeah. So anyway, what happened was, uh, at one point, Piscotter did a fantastic production that he directed mm -hmm. called The Burning Bush. It was the story about, you know, the, the Hungarian aristocracy mm -hmm. had the libel, the blood libel, you know, right. where they claimed that the Jews used uh, Christian blood to bake their matzos, you know, and so there was a huge anti-Semitic thing which of course finally, and they used a boy, a Hasidic boy as a witness. Mm -hmm. So um, Piscata cast me and another boy in the part. We alternated, you know, and um, it was a tremendous experience. So where did, you, where did you go from there? What was your next step? My next, well, what happened was that, um, um, uh, the next step. What happened was that 
But, but again, it's my theory, which I keep saying to you. Here was a German anti-Nazi, right? Yeah. Who gave me my, my future, right. my profession. Right. I'd go, that's what I mean. Individuals, phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. So what happened is I, I did other shows there. And finally, um, there was an Israeli guy who was a director who was teaching at the YMHA in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And he had to go back to Israel. And he comes and he recommends me to direct the show, to take over. Wow. You know? How old are you at this point? At this point, I'm 17, 18. Jeez. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. So I go, I get paid. I direct one show after another. Some very good people who saw it, they were all, because the people who they were not actors, they were, yeah. you know, just a club of. Right. And uh, I got, got wonderful reviews and response and all that. And then an actor, Arthur Storch, who later became a director and actor, he uh, got a job. As, a, as an actor, I think it was the Levittown Playhouse. Yeah. And he to, came to me, asked me to direct the show. You know, I was 18. Yeah. He asked me to direct the show at Levittown. And so uh, I, I was surprised. I thought, okay, here there were kids, or why? But what is this? No, 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 Jack, you can do it. And it was John, I think John and Mary or something like that. Yeah. So I directed my first show. Wow. And, uh, and you're and then, 18 years old. Yeah. Then came the second year of the school. I didn't want to go and ask them for a scholarship again. But there was a guy in town called Joe Wallhandler. Mm -hmm. He later became a big press agent, right. handled Marilyn Monroe, Kazan. I introduced him, but he was a soldier. Uh, uh, conscientious objector during the war. Mm -hmm. And he volunteered to go into Bergen-Belsen where there was a typhus epidemic. Yeah. Know, to show that he's not, that he's doing something. Right. You know, taking a risk with his life. Right. So um, he was the, the um, manager of the Paris Theater, which had just opened and was showing Laurence Olivier, Henry V. Mm -hmm. And I went to Joe, who I became close to, really. And I said, Joe, this is my situation. You know, I need to find uh, uh, $1,200. Yeah. So he came up with an idea. He went to the projectionist, told him the story. And, they, and Joe said, look, all, this, all the big shots of United Artists on the weekend, they're in the Long Island, they're in their homes in Fire Island. Nobody's here except you and I. And he said, in the morning on Sunday, before we open for the matinee, why don't we have a showing of Henry V for a group of kids at school, and this boy can get his money to go his second year. Yeah. So he went to the dramatic workshop, told him, I have a screening for you Sunday morning. Your entire school can come, 300 students. They said, great. And they gave me the second year scholarship. Uh, okay. When I met Laurence Olivier, who became a great fan because of my first film, and I told him the story, he said, well, Jack, another good reason for having done Henry V. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we stop at this point, yeah. uh, and we'll pick this up uh, next time. Yeah. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Okay, all right. Well, that didn't, uh, that didn't go very well, did it, uh, at the end there? But anyway, here we are. What the hell? Uh, yeah, that's uh, Jack Garfine, and uh, we'll have uh, part two of our interview tomorrow night. I think uh, if you stick with it, you're going to find it uh, extremely interesting. Uh, 
uh, I didn't know, I, I lost track of just how to do something as simple as that. Wow, I'm, I'm losing it, folks. Anyway, um, where are we? Okay, so uh, tomorrow night, and if you stick with this interview, I swear to you, especially in the third episode, there's, a, there's some real payoffs about famous people uh, that he had to deal with and uh, the stories behind that. Uh, he was the last man to see James Dean alive, uh, and uh, he had a very close relationship to Marilyn Monroe. All that will be revealed as we go on with this interview. Now, let me just say to you, because I know some of you are, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's, a hard, it's kind of a little hard to get through the interview to this extent. Let me explain it to you, that we have... Uh, uh, a, um, uh, uh, a an old man here uh, he's quite old and I'm trying to kind of debrief him about his life and it is not easy it is not easy and uh, uh, it, to keep him on track is not easy either and so to make this a really coherent interview it takes everything that I've got so I just wanted you to know that and I wanted you to know that if you stick with this, uh, you're going to find it gr very gratifying. Okay, but under and now if you if you have the can't waits and you want to see how the interview turns out, I've had this thing posted on Roku for about two weeks now. Uh, you can go over to Roku, or you can go over uh, and you can go either to Gabnet TV or to the Gabnet. Uh, 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 Roku channel, either channel, and uh, both of them have the second part of this interview with him, plus a speech he gave at his birthday party, um, uh, and uh, the whole interview is there, the whole uh, about an hour and 20 minutes, hour and 25 minute interview is there, and you'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to check it out, you'll be able to see the whole thing before I even run it tomorrow night and the night afterwards. After we get through running it, uh, I will put it up uh, on uh, YouTube and uh, also on uh, Facebook and everywhere else so that you can see the whole interview, all right? So anyway, but for the time being, you'll have to check in tomorrow night to see part two. Uh, I hope you find it uh, gratifying. Uh, it's, it's an odyssey of a man who has had a very long and interesting, interesting life. Uh, by the way, uh, our lines are open. I should say that. Um, uh, there is a change in our GabNet programming. As of tonight, there will be no more connections. Uh, they have had uh, some changes and some problems, and they're not uh, turning out as many programs as they used to. And for the time being, they're going to take a hiatus from, from GabNet. So if you know anybody who wants to do a show at 1 o'clock in the morning, let me know. Uh, but uh, we will, uh, 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 connections will not be here any longer, at least, at least for the immediate future. They're always welcome back. Uh, they've been really fine people to do business with. And uh, I, uh, I like them a lot, and I hope that they will come back at some point. But there have been changes in their lives, too. So uh, we're, uh, we're, uh, the programming will end with Jack at, uh, at, at midnight. So uh, just be aware of that. And any spots you may hear around here on this uh, channel uh, that uh, make reference to connections, just blot them out of your mind till I fix them all. <laughs> Anyway, uh, isn't anybody going to call this morning or this, uh, this evening? Oh, boy, I am out of it. I am still reeling from being a nursemaid. Uh, it's uh, been uh, been interesting. You know, as you know, I picked, oh, I didn't tell you, I picked up girlfriend from the hospital. It's like picking up your pet from the vet, you know? And uh, she came back and uh, she's still broken. I mean, she's, she's recovering, but man, uh, it, it's not like her leg wasn't in, she wasn't in dire pain. And uh, um, uh, it, it, uh, it, I have been pretty much a, uh, a nursemaid uh, for the last couple of days. 
I'm I, after after watching all the stuff with uh, hi hi uh, there Jeff it's Jeff Stein hi. ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, after watching all this stuff with George W. Bush, I'm beginning to feel like his service dog. <laughs> you know, so uh, you know, I, they get me a little little thing I can wear and just say service dog on it. And, you know, it's I don't know what she would do if she didn't have me or if she didn't have somebody or for somebody who has nobody that gets in this condition, because. There's, she has a very hard time getting out of bed, you know, and doing stuff. She's getting better every day. She's doing a little more, but uh, it's uh, it's it's not easy. It's not easy. Uh, and um, uh, I, I, you know, and on top of that, I've been taking these damn gabapentins, and they make me kind of loopy. Uh, so I'm I'm still trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing. Anyway, I'm drinking coffee now, and that should wake me up. Then I'll have to take another gabapentin to put me to sleep tonight. So, anyway, uh, how you doing, Jeff? I'm doing good. It was I'm very good. very nice. You called yesterday to see how she was doing, and I really appreciated that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, you know, we were concerned that uh, if everything was going well, and I, and I, I think it is at this point. Well, yeah. she, you know, she had the operation. And uh, uh, she came home, and the next day morning, uh, or maybe later that day, she was in just in horrible pain. Mm -hmm. And I, she said, why is the pain not going away? And I said, he just cut a big bloody swath into your knee, and then he put a couple of screws in there and some wire, and then closed it back up again. What do you expect? And then today, her other leg has been in pain because what's been happening is for the last week, she's been in bed. And undoubtedly, and she does have sciatica, and the sciatic nerve has probably been affected. And so now her other leg isn't working so well. Well, plus she's using one leg to do all the work. Yeah, she's using one leg to do all the work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, eventually she's going to be able to hobble around on that that leg with this with the brace on it. Which, by the way, is this? Uh, how can I describe it? It's like this science fiction apparatus with a dial on it and everything. I don't know what the dial is for. Maybe it's to get UHF or something. I don't know. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, and the doctor doesn't want to see her until ten days. I guess he doesn't want to hear her moaning and crying and weeping and no complaints. No oh, complaints, wow. right? She he he'll, he wants to probably see her when she says, "Ah, things are better now," you know. But it takes time, you know. We had a, a very interesting uh, problem with Pam and her mother uh, two days ago. Her mother's uh, eighty. Eight years old. Eighty-eight. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she lives close to us. You yeah. You can walk there. Yeah. Uh, she has a little dementia yeah. stuff, but, but uh, she's not feeling well. You know. But well, when she got cold, a little fever, or whatever. So, not quite sure. So Pam takes out. The little device that we have to measure your heart, Do you know, to check your blood pressure. Yeah. And her blood pressure comes out all wacky. Really? Where it's real high and it's real low, and it's. Uh, but it was moving around from from a very high place to to what might be the normal. Uh, yeah. 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 So. Uh, she takes her to this uh, local uh, place where you can get your walk. get a, a walk-in doctor, you know. Yeah. And it just happened to open, it just opened up recently. Yeah. So we nobody's ever been in it. Oh, definitely. is this one of these urgent care places? Yeah. Yeah, they're terrific, actually. Yeah. Yeah. She goes in. She talks to. Was it the doctor or nurse? Uh, the PA. It was a PA. Yeah. If you know. And and the PA happened to also work at, at Yale University at the Yale New Haven Hospital. And her her husband apparently is one of the doctors there or something. And and they said, 
you know what, we don't have the right equipment here. Why don't you get in the car and go to New Haven yeah. to the ER and see what's going on right away. So, well, ER and right away are two mutually exclusive terms. You gave us the magic words. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's hard to get in these hospitals. Yeah. Uh, they get, she told me, uh, I'm going to give you some magic words. You have to say them and you will get right in with your mom being 88. Yeah. Or she feels dizzy or blood pressure is really high. And she's eighty-eight, and they'll put you right in because right, they don't right, want to right. drop. Right. They, well, they don't want they don't want somebody. So we never even sat down in the waiting room. They don't they want somebody dead. dropping dead in their ER. Yeah, exactly. You know, they, they, if they can get if they can get you out to the sidewalk, it's okay if you die there. You know, right. I've had I've had people in the ERs take me out to the sidewalk and say, honestly, you're not going to get in for about five hours. <laughs> I'm not supposed to do this because it's bad for business. But go down the street. You're you're not going to get in here forever, and you're wasting your well, time. Well, that's here. why I always I've suggested to people lately these urgent care facilities because yeah, this one was fabulous. Because uh, you know if you call your doctor and you say I'm on and I'm not feeling well, they'll say we'll see you in three days, right? Well, you're sick <laughs> yeah. now, and the yeah, urgent exactly. care people. Well, I've been I think her doctor's an ass anyway, so <laughs> I was already getting her a new doctor, well, and. Well, um, yeah. Well, when I've been getting, when I get uh, uh, like a cold or something like that, or the flu, uh, that's yeah. the first place I hit. I don't call my doctor anymore. I go to the, uh, ur you know, the urgent care. It's, uh, well, I forget what it's called now. But people who aren't me on Medicare, you pay a fortune. Like if I go to an urgent, I went to an urgent care for poison ivy. It cost me one hundred and ten dollars, even with my insurance. Really. Yeah. That oh. was that was an, uh, not a happy. Yeah, with me, I've, I've never. I don't think I've ever paid a penny. Right, because you guys are on Medicare. Yeah, Medicare but I'm not, not, not and, Medicare yet. And the supplemental. Yeah, between the two, right. it takes care of it. I only pay $700 a month for my coverage and $100 when I have poison ivy. There yeah, you go. All right, <laughs> right, right. All right, you guys have fun. Well, that's what you get for marrying a young woman, Jeff, who isn't on, isn't on Medicare yet. You know. But but at least she can drive the car. Right? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Isn't anybody else going to call? Where's Phil? Where's everybody tonight? I guess, I don't know. I must have scared them away or something. But um, in case people aren't aware, I'll just say this so that people know. My uh, my wife had uh, 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 fell, was pushed and fell on the pavement and broke her knee. And uh, on Friday, she had an operation. And uh, she was there overnight. We heard here on the show from the doctor that she was okay and that she... They were bringing her out of the uh, anesthetic and uh, pick her up in the morning. You know, it's like the vet. And uh, uh, so uh, that's where we left it off. And I picked her up. And, uh, you know, it's been several days of playing nursemaid. But what the hell? You know, it's, it's the way things go. Uh, you got to do it. You got to do what you got to do, you know. There's, you know, I, I can't tell her. It's funny. I can't tell her. Get it yourself. You know, there's this. It just doesn't come into the uh, into the vernacular. Hello. How are you? Uh, wait a minute. Here comes Renee Collins, uh, adding Renee to the group here. Um, and uh, 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 where are we? I'm just so punchy. Hello, Renee. How are you? Hello, Alex. Yes. Good to see um, you. I need to take a minute before anything gets started and make an apology to you. And I talked a little bit about it on Jack's show, but I wanted to make sure that everybody heard it because uh, in the chat we were having conversations about it. So, yes, I am terribly sorry for coming at you that way. You didn't ask for my assistance in any way, shape, or form. I was just trying to help, and it was my bad for doing so. Well, it was just, I, you know, I've been rather stressed out about this. So I, I, my reaction to you was an overreaction probably on my part as well because all you were doing was trying to help. So, you know, uh, that's Well, okay. you know, we both, somebody on the chat said, but our family's fighting. We should fix this. <laughs> Mom, Dad, quit fighting. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. So uh, I figured. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, no, and, and it's it's, the only other thing is, is that 
it's very tough to be a caregiver. Yeah. And if Nurse Diane would call in, she'd give you a whole bunch of really cool tips, too. Because they know shit that we don't know. <laughs> well, you know, the only shit that I know is that uh, uh, if she brings the little bell, I have to come. You know, I have to, you know, whatever she wants. I need more water. She can, She's really playing this for all it's worth. I have to say that, you know. It's good. Uh, and I told her, I said, listen, one good day, you're on your own, kid. You know, you know. Yeah, that recovery is not going to be eight months. It'll be about ten. Plus, I, I, don't even, I don't even get to sleep in the same room with her. Mm. Well, her knee, I mean, her, well, the cast is what, from ankle to crotch? It's an an ankle to a thigh. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's a cool. brace. It's not a cast. It's a brace. Uh, yeah. And uh, I, it has dial a dial with numbers on it, so I guess you dial it down or whatever <laughs> when you're, you know, the doctor can change the, the you know, the, the bend in it or whatever. So. Oh, so it's for the it's for this and not for compression. No, it's not for compression. It's for straightening the leg so it can't leap in the same. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but uh, but nevertheless, uh, the reason I can't sleep with her isn't because she's got that. She doesn't move, so I I'd be fine. Are you there, Renee? What? Yeah, I'm oh. coming back. I'm oh. sorry. Um, uh, I and, got lost. And we, and we just lost Jack. Uh, anyway, uh, okay. My okay, I'm back. Uh, my um, toggle. Uh, what do you call it? My uh, my my. Uh, what, what, where was I going with this? See, I'm, that's this damn drug. I start forgetting stuff. <laughs> uh, no, I can't, I, can't, I, work, huh? I can't sleep. In, oh, turn down your audio, uh, Vernon. It's blasting. Yeah. Yeah. I so think. is this? Well, uh, okay. Uh, well, anyway, the reason other side effect. Oh, sorry. The reason I can't sleep uh, in, in the same oh, room with her, her is not because she's not moving. You know, I mean, I'm not. I, you know, she's lying on her back sleeping. That's all she can do. Uh, so that's not the problem. Uh, the, the the problem is that's my watch. Uh, oh, I was going to say uh, there's voices. Yeah, yeah it's it's a, this. <laughs> Hi, Mickey. Yeah. 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 Anyway, now the point I was going to make is that it, she, um, uh, it's that she gets up sometimes at like you know five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning, which I don't do. All right. So it, she then wants to watch some TV to keep her company. So if I were in there, she couldn't do that. She, normally, she would just go to the other room. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, you know. Uh, and uh, and uh, go to the other room and do it there, you know, and watch TV there. But she can't do that because she can't she can barely get out of bed. So I have to sleep in the other room. So I've been sleeping in the other room and tweaking my back out for like four nights now. But uh, she's, uh, you know, I guess she'll get better. If she doesn't, we'll shoot her, you know. Uh, you know but it's, 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 it hasn't been... Uh, it's it's not my natural inclination to be a nurse, okay? Uh, I, I'm a terrible nurse, but I got to tell you, she is the world's worst patient, you know. So uh, that combination is really fun. It's almost a comedy of errors, you know. But I just I just been really sweet and nice and yes, dear. What do you need? I need some more water. You know, I need some more of my seltzer. Um, you know, don't forget to put the, the stuff in it because she's got some kind of, I don't know, stuff that her doctor gives her as a laxative. I don't know. It goes in the water. So I put that in there and then I bring that to her. Well, could you get me a root beer too? Yeah. Okay, dear. Uh, you know, <laughs> if we buy you a French made outfit, would you put it on and go in there uh, one time? <laughs> uh, well, what I told her I was going to get her was a little bell. <laughs> and I said, on top of it all, I said, uh, why don't you just start referring to me like you would refer to a butler by my last name and just say, oh, Schwarzman, would you get me my water, please? You know, things like that. That has a good ring to it. Yeah, it has a good ring to it. So will the <laughs> bell. Uh, but uh, what, who, what, what do we, who do we just lose? Oh, we lost Jack, Kevin. Jack's having problems. No, Kevin was having problems. Not no, Jack. I'm here. Jack here. was having Kevin's problems, here. but Kevin. Oh, Kevin's there. And then who do we yeah, lose? Jack came on and they disappeared. Oh, he, he we've back. dropped Jack twice now. 
or Jack oh, dropped those. I see. Plates. I guess I wasn't paying attention. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, no. We're talking. You know, I I went to my my neurologist yesterday. And I told him this drug makes me rather loopy, and he said, "Well, he said, does it make you feel better?" I said, "Yeah." The thing that it that it does here's here's why I'm I'm still doing it. Okay, otherwise I just stop it and say I'll live with the with the foot numbness. The reason I'm doing it is because it's made me so nice that uh, that uh, Marjorie just loves it. I mean, I, I don't think I could have gone through what we're going through now as easily as I have having this drug in me. So uh, I'm, I'm just a sweetheart. I'm just absolutely the, the world's greatest nurse. Yes, we're in anger. I need some of that. What the hell is it called? It's called gabapentin. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That but, but, gave me a headache. Huh? Really? Did it give you a headache? It gave me a headache. Could you give me a soda, Alex? <laughs> 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 Fuck you, Kevin. And Jack's, and Jack's the one with the bell, so Jack will have to ring it for you. Yeah, if he ever gets a, a clean line in here. You know. So, uh, Phil... I owe you an apology because I looked it up again. Boy, you're and... apologizing to everybody today. Whoa. And well, I look this stuff. Oh, I, no. So when you guys say things, I go back and look it up. Like, I know never to get into arm's distance of Phil. What do you, what, what do you mean arm's distance of Phil? You're in Hawaii. You won't even get close. <laughs> never. Never get in a motion where Phil can grab your body part. Because he's taken this close quarter contact classes and he refreshes on them he could take a damn elephant down probably <laughs> in five minutes but so it, i went up to his website and i reviewed all that and it really looks good but phil is dangerous so um that's not why i'm apologizing though uh you're right the amt's back on on the tax uh on his tax package but do you guys remember that the we are not going to be deducting our donations anymore. Really? Unless unless you do it through an S corp. Really? S -corp. Why is that? I'm an S corp. He's an <laughs> S corp. Yeah. So Phil needs to tell us exactly uh, what he knows about an S corp. If you don't mind, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hijack. All right. Uh, you mind? Yeah, what happens is uh, any profit or loss is funneled through your personal return. So let's say your uh, business has a loss, then uh, your personal return can be uh, reduced by that amount. If your business has a gain, uh, it, that personal return is responsible for that gain. I see. In other words, what it does is you have a corporation, but the corporation doesn't really have the money. The, the Your personal income has the money is that right right okay that's right no i didn't know about that you know. no that's new with trump this so, is a trump so thing the tax works on your personal huh? tax rate not on the well your personal tax rate could change depending on the amount of income that the business makes you just got to make sure that uh, you wind up fairly neutral or a loss at the end of the uh -oh. year. Another <laughs> book. Yeah, we, we need Everybody to understand that. Kevin, let's see a little more of your face. It's like right down at the bottom of your face. Don't picture. get worried. This is tape. Oh, you see? It, can you move your camera a little bit there, Kevin? Uh, 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 yeah, I'm moving stuff around. Huh? Here. Let me... Yeah, I know. that These cameras are very hard to adjust. Um, there you. Oh, there you go. See? Yeah. Now we get. Uh, now we get stuff around the room. Now we get full sure. Santa. You know. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, Alex, did they give Marjorie uh, that uh, machine that uh, moves her knee yet? Uh, may I tell you that I got a note from uh, one of our listeners who is a physical therapist who says you don't use that on the knee at this point. At this point. At this uh, point. No, she's not supposed to move the knee. Yeah. Oh, and even after that, he said it's not that much good. Huh. He said just regular physical therapy will take care of it. I, yeah. I love physical therapy. In fact, I'll, nice tell you exactly what, I'll tell you exactly what he said. Uh, and, oh, let me just get the... The info here. Let me see. Pa, 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 pa. Yeah, it all de it all depends on what what happened with your knee. Yeah, 
Uh, let me see here. Uh, 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 well, uh, By the way, PT stands for physical torture. Physical torture. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> nice people, but I swear they know how to hurt you. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay, it was Mike Splat. You remember Mike Splat had called? Or Spalt. Yeah. 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 Uh, Mike Splat. Yeah. Mike Spalt. Sorry, Mike. He crazy. writes, um, I, caught Louisiana, up, a drummer. I caught up on your, your shows. I do home health PT. If you guys have any questions about anything, let, us, let me know. And ignore the fools. They kept telling you that she should have a machine to move her knee. I'm sure she <laughs> has a knee immobilizer, and bending the knee is not allowed at this stage. I have helped many people with uh, patella fractures, and it's not too bad of a re it's not too bad a recovery. Most Excellent. people are ready to bend their knee when the doctor allows. Okay. Oh, Excellent. That's great. Sure. Yeah. That could, you know, I was probably talking about an MCL or an ACL or whatever. My yeah. brother blew his ACL out. That was tough. Yeah, boy, can't wait to hear Kevin about Kevin's surgery because this mm -hmm. is like, has it been done in the United States before? Just out of curiosity. Oh, yeah, I've heard of these things. Uh, yeah. Having your uh, heel replaced? No, 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 no. We're not talking oh, no, about that. He's not doing that. He's not doing no, that. No, no, I was talking about Kevin. All right. No. Kevin is not having that operation. He's having a uh, implant put in that's supposed to kill the pain. The pain. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. A nev nevro device. A nevro yeah. device. It, it yeah. It nevro works. Uh, it better work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I yeah. mean, dealing with pain is a major deal. You know, I mean, uh, Marjorie goes to a pain doctor. Management. Yeah, that's pain who's management doing mine doctor. is my pain doctor. Yeah. And uh, he's, he, you know, he's very careful with the pills he gives her and he keeps her, uh, you know, on schedule and makes sure she doesn't go over with the stuff or whatever. When she went into the hospital, they said, whatever they want to give you, let them give it to you there. But once you leave, don't let them prescribe anything for you or have them call me and I'll tell them what to prescribe. Uh, oh, yep. Yeah, because they're very rigid pain doctors. Especially and that's, that's, that's one of the reasons they're, they're doing this is because all the laws are changing again in January. And she's, you know, we're, we're trying, I'm trying to get off of what I've been taking. I've seriously knocked down what I've been taking, but I want to, I want to knock it down even more so. And this is supposed to help do that. But yet, you know what happens? I got to tell you, it, these things are meant to do something very important. They're meant to kill pain. Uh, and and this whole uh, uh, rush to judgment about OxyContin and all of these drugs is, I think, unfair to people who truly have pain because now that's, that's exactly right. Yeah, now and I, doc and I've fought that for the last year and a half. Right. Well, he, you want me to give you a good example? Okay. I'll uh, give you a bunch of them. Uh, he, he, he the pain. Uh, her. Uh, not, I don't know if it was this pain doctor, but it was the last pain doctor she had. Uh, they gave her a blood test. And they found pot in her system because, you know, anytime you take a blood test on her, you will find pot in her system, I guarantee. Um, she likes to come home at night and have a little toke off her joint, you know. And um, uh, uh, they found pot in her, in her blood test and they said, well, we can't give you your painkiller. <clears throat> yep. Unless you stop the marijuana. And she said, What? And it was because this is the, a rule the government has that if they find if he finds pot in your system, so she went to another doctor that didn't didn't do blood tests and didn't want to find that out about her, and and really I got to tell you, there's no real uh, cause and effect of of drug addiction with marijuana and then oxycontin or in her case Dilaudid, right? But yet the government who really doesn't know better makes these these stupid yeah. rules you know. well that's how that, we got that, marijuana classified as a class one drug well yeah they and don't the, know what they're doing and that's what so. would happen to me is i had i had a regular pain doctor that i went to for you know four or five years and then he decided when these laws i don't know what went on but he decided all of a sudden he was going out of practice and leaving the country so i don't know what went on but <laughs> I can supposedly he got sick, 
Yeah. Anyway, I was left without a doctor. And so I went to my regular doctor and he said, well, I can't, I can't, uh, issue that many pills. I'm going to have to send you over to another doctor. And I was without a doctor for four months, constantly going to another, I, I, I thought I was shopping and they said, well, you can't do that. And I go, well, what am I supposed to do? This guy won't take me. This guy won't take me. This guy won't take me. So I finally got to my doctor who sent me to another doctor, and he started telling me, okay, I'll issue you, but it'll only be once a month. You have to come in. You have to take a drug test. But when I told him, you know, he, he said, maybe you should try marijuana. And I said, well, wait a minute. You know, and this is this is a doctor, a, a full... Uh, by the way, by the way, hold on a second. He uh, said Vernon, to me... Vernon, he Vernon, said, uh, hold on a second. Vernon... Your microphone is rubbing against your shirt, and it's making a lot of noise. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Anyway. So yeah. anyway, he said, uh, I said, well, if I test positive for THC yeah. and, and I'm taking an opioid, won't that kick me out? And he goes, oh, no, it's legal. And I go, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the opposite everybody else is telling me. And then you're telling me you're taking a drug test. That doesn't make sense. So I never did it. But I continued to, you know, go to him until I found this other doctor. And now she, you know, I have to take a, I, I randomly get tested by her all the time. I don't, you know, smoke right. or anything. Right. But I told her, I said, I wanted to try the CBD. And she said, be care very careful because some of it has THC in it. And you can use the CBD, but don't get anything with yeah. THC in it. And I said, okay. And that helps. But I got to be real careful because some of it. Has CBD trace stands for what? And she'll cut me off. What does CBD stand for? Uh, cannabis, blah, 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 a bunch of. It, I don't. It's a part of part of cannabinoid. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, part but, of the plant. That's but not all I'm the, saying is, is if you need things for pain, you need things for pain. You know, and, well, and that's the problem is when they when they started all that that craziness, they were just cutting doctors off and 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 finding them i mean five doctors in town literally got their licenses taken away because they were quote unquote issuing too many Ugh. yeah and literally got their licenses taken away yeah. phil's very quiet tonight is there a reason why you're quiet tonight well, uh, you know, with all this drug talk, I, I went from two bags a day to three, three to four, and now I'm giving rich old dude head and limousines just to be able to support my habit. No, I see. Uh, I'm going to okay. go, go shoot people because I'm psycho, psycho, psychotropic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, you know, I've got pain, but, uh, you know, I just live with it. <laughs> you know, I don't take anything. You know, well, go to sleep early. The, the truth be known, in most cases, <laughs> if people want the best bromide for pain, uh, either mm -hmm. an ibuprofen or uh, a um, an aspirin will do. In in a lot yeah. of cases, not in Kevin's case, but in a lot of cases. Uh, but you know, people want something a little heavier. They they oh, give me a painkiller. You know, well, you don't always have to give a painkiller, but I just think that we've gotten to the point where we've taken very valuable drugs that people need, like Kevin, like Marjorie does with her back, and we make them so difficult for doctors to prescribe. I mean, you got to go to a pain doctor who knows how to handle the system and and get it done. It's uh, but it's it's amazing, and it's amazing that they wanted to stop giving her the very thing that was relieving her pain because she was smoking marijuana. I mean, that's kind of silly, really. It very silly. It's not they so much silly. Drug test to take drugs. It's, it's not so, so much silly. It's cruel. Well, I'm constantly telling her, find me something different. I don't care as long as it relieves what my problem is because, you know, I'll still you know I, I've cut down half of what they told me I needed. And then I still wake up in the middle of the night with my, my foot going crazy. I got to get up and walk around the house to get rid of the pain. Just I get up to walk around and, and, and walk around the house just to relieve the pain what in the middle feel? of the night. Does it fall asleep or it just aches? No, it just aches, I'm sure. It aches. It stings. I get, I get 
the shooter pains and feels like an ice pick's going through my, you know, the arch of my foot. Yeah. And I can't go to sleep. Well, I, I mean, I live with a woman who lives with pain all the time. I mean, uh, her back situation. She lives with you. You know, um, actually, for you, a few years ago, they were going to operate on her back, and she found that the painkillers kind of helped it enough that she didn't need to have it. And the doctors were happy she didn't need to have it because anytime you, you don't need to have uh, surgery, that's good. That's a good thing. But it was only because of the painkillers. Yeah. Are the painkillers tr uh, transitory, or, or you know, do, do they stop working after a while? No, she hers continue to work. You know, she, and and she makes sure she takes as few as possible a day. You know, now like you, you, had, you had mentioned, they gave her Dilaudid uh, at the uh, at the hospital, and it was a big dose, and she didn't feel anything. Uh, I'm just wondering if she's. Uh, becoming desensitized to no it should, supposedly it still works for her and we we you know she's taking it now for this uh but uh, i think that the pain that she has right now is so strong that i don't know if any pill would take care of it you know she mm -hmm. just has to get through the pain she has to get you know i told as i told her i said look this guy took your knee he sliced it open he threw a couple of screws in the kneecap. He put some wire in there. He sewed it back up. And you don't think that's going to hurt for a couple of days? Yeah. You know? That's... And, yeah. and you, you're hanging around me way too much. Yeah. <laughs> that's all yeah. I got to say. <laughs> My wife says that all the time. Yeah, you know, and I and I, I uh, and I, I I and then her other leg today started giving her a bad time, but it's because she's been in bed for a week, you yeah. know. And as you yeah. say, Kevin, she's using that foot to take care of the other foot, and uh, yeah, she's favoring one yeah, side. Yeah, and and that's that's what she's getting there. But I mean, well, that's normal. Oh, and then then we call the doctor, right? This is so typical. You call the doctor and you say, or she said. This other pain, I'm having just an unremitting pain. Woke up in the middle of the night from pain in my other leg. And he said, well, I don't know what that could be. It could probably be sciatica. Uh, he, she, he said, but I'd only know if you came down here and I could see you. So if you can get down here. And she said, there's no way I'm getting down there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> have you just heard me? You know. Fucking you know. leaving this house. Another hundred dollar handshake. And believe me, getting her down there the other day just to get the get her looked at, so that and then then he says go over to Mount Sinai and get a uh, pre-op uh, 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 physical, and uh, you know we had to get her down there in great pain, get her out of the cabs by sliding her out somehow, get her up to the ninth, eighth floor of this building, have her see the doctor, go down, get in another cab, go to Mount Sinai, go to the second floor. Of my, I mean, it was just by the end of the day. I mean, that's the reason I didn't do a show here. I was so exhausted. It was ridiculous, you know. And yet... You know, so whatever happened to house calls, you know, like, oh, well, you got a broken leg. I think I better come out there because you can. There's no way you're going to get here. Well, they only work Monday to Friday now. Huh? The doc is now, everything is scheduled Monday to Friday. Oh, wait a minute. Weekends. Forget about Wednesdays. Wednesdays. Oh, they all take don't Wednesdays. Don't work Fridays off. anymore either. No more Friday Friday insurance. Yeah, uh, everything in month. It was always during the week of testing. Well, her doctor operates on Friday. Friday. You know. Will the insurance pay for an ambulance to take it to the doctor for that examination? And not for the examination, no. Only for the emergency. When we took her to the emergency room, it'll take care of it. But, mm -hmm. you know, I'd have to get some kind of ambulance service to take her down there. And that's like 40, 50 bucks. And we don't get the money back, you know. 40, 50 so bucks. I mean, you spend that on a movie. Your insurance doesn't cover any of that, any of those rides. I don't. I don't walk. believe it does. I haven't checked, but I'm not about ready to experiment. You know. Yeah. Uh, it just. The, yeah. And John Rockwell said it took him a long time to get that that service to come and pick him up. Yeah. So. Yeah. Get registered. For well, there there yeah, are there are ambi uh, services they call ambulettes. Okay, that will drive you to some place, and it's like thirty dollars fee plus like uh, 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 two four dollars a mile or something. You know, I mean, but after a, you know, to go downtown it costs us about forty bucks. I don't know. You know, I mean, I think she's going to be fine. 
just a matter of seeing this through until she's and she's she's even working from home right now. She sat at the computer today and did some of her work at, at the office that she had to do in closing the books for the month. And so, you know, her work can go on from here. But, you know, she is still in great pain. I think she's in less pain than she thinks she is. It's just she, the, the second day is always the worst. Well, it, her the leg with with the knee is okay now. It's the other one that's bothering her. It's not okay, <laughs> but you know. Funny. I say, uh, you know, I said, what what is on a, a scale of one to ten? How much does it hurt? She's an eleven. Yeah. You know? okay. Well, thank <laughs> I you. I hate that one you, to ten shit. Yeah, you've got the spinal tap of leg problems. You know. I mean, <laughs> But uh, uh, it, it was, it, you know, it, it's, an, it's an amazing thing we're going through here. And, uh, uh, and I see her yeah, walking around the say, house. You know, the she looks, goes in there for a half hour. And... I'm, I'm thinking if she were like this at Halloween, I would have her answer the door. For sure. Because she looks like a witch with her cane hunched over, crawling around. You know. I'm melting. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, on a good note, yeah, and change it a little bit here is that it would be really nice if people would wake up to the fact that healthcare is important because her accident had nothing, she was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And if you did that to a whole bunch of other Americans, they would never have made it this far, they would have never gotten through this without their health care. They probably would have tried to. St- Stay with the knee broken and see if it gets better. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Sounds like way right, too right much Vernon. Pain. Yep. Yep. That's exactly what would have happened. Yeah. Put yep. a band-aid on it and take two aspirin. Yeah. Call me yeah. in the morning. There you go. Some people just just put up with it, you know. And, and but uh, uh, you know we're lucky. I mean we do have medical insurance and and uh, it's it's. I think kind of taken care of. It's amazing, though. I get bills. I can't figure this one out. I got a bill the other day. She had a colonoscopy. Uh, and uh, I got the bill. I mean, I got the my uh, health breakdown. My SAG after sent me a breakdown of it. And the uh, colonoscopy was $2,200. <laughs> Medicare paid on hun- sale. Medicare paid 131. That's it. And and they have to accept it because they oh, they, they make they it. They forgave the rest of it. Huh? They forgave the rest of it. They yes. Forgave the rest of it. Yeah. 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 And uh, I find that really interesting. I mean, well, that's your socialized medicine. So therefore, no, uh, no that has nothing medicine. to do with socialized medicine. Yeah. Though. Well, it's insurance. Uh, you know, they Medicare. Uh, is uh, Medicaid, you know, setting the rate, yeah. and these guys have to live with it and hope that they get some non. No, they don't. Well, wait a minute, uh, wait a minute. They don't have to accept it, Phil. They they can just say we're not going to carry Medicare. Well, they uh, the ones that do do because they feel it's the right thing to do. No, for the patient. no, because I think they also feel that it's better to get that business than no business at all. You don't think it costs them more than one hundred and thirty one dollars to perform that uh, procedure? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I have no doubt about it. And you want to ask me if I feel sorry for the hospital? Well, no, because it's the one where Joan Rivers died. But uh, Did you go to the same, that outpatient one? It's not an outpatient one. Well, yeah, the downtown. Yeah. I yeah. remember you talking about it. Yeah, that, that was the place. Yeah. So they only got $131 instead. Of, maybe they got another 30 or 40 from my insurance. Uh, How I don't much did understand. they pay Joan? I don't, John would be proud. I, I don't understand it, though, because I don't understand. I think what happens is these companies use it as a write-off for their taxes. You know, the difference between what Medicare pays them and so on, they can take off as a as a loss. Yeah, but you can't pay the rent with a loss. Well, you can pay the <laughs> rent with a loss if you've got other people that are paying full board on it, you know. Yeah. And, and insurance companies are covering more of it. But I don't know what insurance companies are paying now. You know, what would an insurance company pay for it? Yeah, so I was just looking at my daughter's 
heart thing that I got from Stanford. Yeah. That was twenty six hundred bucks. Yeah. They paid it was nineteen hundred bucks in cardiology, six hundred yeah. bucks for the visit. Yeah. They paid insurance paid fifteen hundred. They wrote off nine ninety five and I paid twenty. You paid twenty. Now my question is, uh uh you don't have Medicare, right? I have Medicare, but um I believe yeah. this probably went under my wife's insurance. Yeah, so that was your standard insurance, not probably. Medicare. Yeah. Okay, so but so when, she what, come, what, well, what, she may come under the Medicare. Yeah, but I'm what, not sure. Yeah, but what Phil say is that. saying there is is that you know, well, it's because it's Medicare and blah blah blah, and it's socialized medicine. Believe me, the insurance companies don't pay much more than that. You know, so yeah. I mean, it's 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 a rough life today for doctors. I got to say that I hate to say I feel sorry for them, but I do. Oh, it, it I'm is. Not, I'm not sure it's the doctors. That, so the doctors are taking the hit because of the insurance companies. Yeah, they are. Hmm? So well, they I, should have become dermatologists or dentists. No, no, no. no the, <laughs> the dough is in plastic <laughs> surgery. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's, it's all cash. I think the dough so. is also. I think the dough is also in hospitals because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that Medicare pays far more for a hospital stay. And far more of, of that than uh, uh, they do of hospital. You know, my heart procedure. Like that, yeah. My heart. Each of those heart procedures was around fifty grand. Ooh. And uh, you had heart uh, procedures. I, yeah, the, the stents. The stents yeah. in your heart. Oh, yeah, in the, your heart. Yeah. 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 The, the yeah the angioplasty. And how much were they uh, a piece? They were around fifty thousand. Uh, I don't have the breakdown here anymore. What, any, the anymore. stents were $50,000? The, the operation, yeah. Uh, I, I, I paid <coughs> Ooh, I paid zero. So that means, uh, you know, but it was uh, socialized medicine because I'm going to Kaiser. <laughs> he loves that Kaiser. Kaiser. Well, it wasn't exactly <laughs> free because how much do you pay a month to Kaiser? 1300 Yeah, okay. So it wasn't exactly free. They've gotten their 50000 yeah, already. Yeah, that's a lot. He's on the gold plan. That's a lot, there, Jim. Yeah, yeah. But I at took least the he has plan. the option. He yeah. has a choice. Yeah. There's a lot of Americans out there that don't have a choice for the heart stuff. Yeah. We're not talking like... Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, but they, you know, I, I mean, people people do that. Uh, where the doctors and hospitals do that stuff, they don't leave people to... Uh, uh, you know, to uh, to die if they go in and they say my heart is, uh, you know, I can't he breathe. He was or... telling us that they went to the hospital and ended up in the hallway for a long time. Alex, Alex. is that you and your kidney stones? No, my kidney stones, it was amazing how fast they actually took care of me. I, yeah. I don't know if it was because it was a quiet day or, <laughs> or because of maybe just the nature of what it was that they didn't want to uh, just leave me out there, you know. Uh, hello to Bree, by the way, from Dubai. Um, hello, Bree. Oh, greetings. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Yeah. Uh, but all I'm saying is is that, you know, we, we, we this seems to be almost a constant discussion we have on this program about the nature of medicine and the nature of the cost of medicine, you know. And uh, it's it's really sad, you know. I mean, uh, and part of the problem is the insurance companies. I got to tell you, you know, we pay, or my wife's company pays, uh, 500, it's gone up to $561 every quarter, okay, which is not bad. It's about $2,200 a year that they pay for us to get our supplemental, which is much cheaper than if we were going through anybody else. and yet I thought about it when I looked at what they paid, uh-huh. for instance, on her colonoscopy, which was like $31. I'm thinking, these guys are going to make a profit even off of us. You know, these insurance companies. But this is the state of health care in the United States. Other countries don't live this way. Well, That's true. And they get along just fine. Well, other countries have one, single payer. They're, we're the, one of the few countries that doesn't have single payer. The other country that uh, does have single payer, believe it or not, doesn't have single payer. Besides the United States, is China, and you would think China would have, you know, 
single payer. And, and we're all with them with the tariffs, too, uh, both of us. No, but what I'm saying is is that oh. you would think that as a communist country, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, you're right. you know, medicine yeah, would be because free. Yeah, Cuba does. Hmm? Cuba oh, does. Oh, yeah, Cuba does. Absolutely. How many, yeah, people, so how many people in China aren't paying because they're working in the fields and, and things like that? It would bankrupt them. Uh, to uh, put a billion I don't, people I don't know. I'll tell you what they do. Healthcare. I'll tell you what, they, what I've heard they do in China. They do teach, because there's a lack of, uh, 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 you know, there are million and a, a billion and a half people in China, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, maybe a billion too. Uh, and there are a lot of people in China and not enough doctors to go around. So what, It's going to be like that here too. No, so what the government does is they train people in villages and so on to take care of themselves medically. The, the, the small things that, you know, the giving out of antibiotics if somebody is sick or whatever, they leave that up to the people in that community to be able to administer that. It's only the really serious stuff that you go to a major doctor for. You know? Do a lot of the countries that have single payer have the obesity uh, rates that we do here? No. And therefore, no. Uh, diabetes and other other no. issues no. which are debilitating no. because of obesity? I don't think so. I, yeah. I, you, know, so, I, you, know, I, that, you go to France, you don't see a lot of fat, fat Frenchmen, you know. No. You, you, go to, uh, you go to England, uh, they, yeah, there are some fat guys there, but for the most part, they're, they're on the skinnier side. Uh, we're, we're, we're maybe the most obese country in the world. I mean, we're a bunch yeah. of fat fucks here. I think only 12% of the uh, population in this country uh, meet the uh, guidelines for... Uh, uh, BMI? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, you gotta, you got to take that in context. I mean, like, for instance, am I obese? Uh, I don't know if were. I'm... Well, I guess I was. I don't know if I'm still considered obese, so I'm still 10 pounds uh, over that, you know, that <coughs> sweet spot yeah. they talk about. Yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I'm heavy. I'm, I'm considered morb- morbidly obese. Oh, well, I'm not morbidly obese. I'm just... You were. Uh, no, I don't think <laughs> yeah. I was morbid. Was I? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, uh, look yeah. it up. Look it up. Yeah, and your BMI. See, you know, your weight, your height. And uh, what you were yeah. prior to the well, Atkins diet? You eat more than six French uh, fries. Uh, 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 pa- uh, Tony, did you so, raise your hand? You know what I was going to say with the insurance. Too bad they couldn't do it like you said a while back. Like they should make it like say we all need a colonoscopy at some point in regular checkups. They should make certain tests just free for the people. Oh yeah, it's here if you want to use it without I even agree. insurance. Uh, people don't want to know. They bury their head in the sand. But you know, yeah, getting Tony, getting Tony's people not morbidly obese. He's just morbid. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the, the 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 problem is it's getting getting these people crazy. to go to doctors and to get obesity. regular checkups. I mean, look, I have to admit, I waited mm-hmm. till I was sixty five for my first colonoscopy. Oh, you waited till sixty five? Yeah, I mean, I should have gotten the first one at fifty, like they recommend. You know, but of yeah, course, I don't want to get something it. shoved up my ass. You know, they uh, knock you out, right? You don't know nothing. Oh, no, they shove it up your ass without putting you out. Yeah. What do you I mean? Of course, if I got to stay, she's they staying. Can. Going what? What'd you say, uh, uh, Kevin? They can do it. Well, they can, I, they can do it without putting you out. I'm afraid of doctors. They, uh, they, so they, so they can do it without putting you out. You know why they put people out? It, well, it's supposedly like not that terribly painful. It's just that people would wiggle Air. around a lot, and people yeah. would would <laughs> you know oh they would, if they felt something slight they would go ow you know and so on so just yeah. put, put the fucker out and let's yeah, shove that thing up there look exactly around at our leisure and come you know get out you know I did that exactly yes same yes thing. Ver, yes Vernon there, there's another reason they knock you out and that is there is a danger of them perforating your colon. If, if you do wiggle the round sub, they could actually penetrate the wall, and then you would have a serious problem. Oh, shit. Right, right. So, you know, all of this. Uh, exactly, Tony. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, oh, shit. So there's your answer, Literally. Tony. Well, your mother had a colonoscopy. They put her out, didn't they? Yeah, they did. And she, she, had, she, had to have, she doesn't realize it for the test in Sloan when they take it out. She's got to have it again. We didn't tell her. 
Because they got to clean all the poop out so when they go in, they can see what they're looking Oh, she didn't uh, yeah, prepare? We didn't tell her that. Her that she's go well, all I know is the proudest day of my life was when I went to my doctor and he was finished with the colonoscopy. Okay. And as I came out of the ether, he said, uh, you were very clean inside. Oh, Congratulations, you did a good job. And I thought, you know, finally I've accomplished something in life here. Did I tune into an old show? Give me that. Uh, oh, oh, uh, oh, yes, oh, 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 yeah, okay, all right. And you know, yeah. this almost happens. I download this podcast. Yeah. Wait a minute, hold on a second. And I'm, I'm usually eating lunch or dinner, and you start talking about this on the podcast, and I have to I fast forward. <laughs> That's the rude. young punk and kid. Look, I mean, I have to go for my first one soon, eventually here. But I don't, you know, I don't want to mess up anybody's lunch or dinner. <laughs> well, the, the good news the is, is the procedure is actually nowhere near as bad as any of us make it. The bad news is the prep sucks. Yeah, but Renee, <laughs> did you throw up from the prep? My mother was. No, no, no. no. Nobody throw throws up from the prep. She's giving a game. Nobody throws up from the prep. Nobody throws up. Salty, she says. No. We were made it to. Nobody <laughs> throws up from the prep only if it tastes bad to them. Oh, yeah. it tastes bad. She said it was horrible. Well, you know what well, I, I use? I use a, this magnesium citrate, and it's just a yeah. bottle of stuff tastes pretty good, and you just put it in a, like, ginger ale or whatever and just down the damn thing and yeah. uh, then before you know it you're looser than a goose you know? i did the prep on the, on the air tony yeah. yeah really yeah yeah so breed that's what you're gonna have to do the what prep it take what it take renee you timed me it was a, an hour and a minute i'm gonna cry there yep an hour and a minute <laughs> <laughs> i'm young then i was out of here you know, you know what the the procedure is a breeze. The damn prep is the worst. But oh, okay. once well, you do it, you don't have to do it for a while. Yeah, the That's what my brother says. You're going and to and once you've done the prep this. once, you know what's coming. So the next time, it's not as bad. You know. No. I don't want to scare anybody no. off from getting colonoscopies. <laughs> because, can, do it, I can I get a virtual one? Uh, uh, the virtual. I've never uh, done a colonoscopy. I've you only never had did a colonoscopy? I've had a sigmoidoscopy. No, but that's not that's enough, right. Phil. Yeah, and well, it felt enough to me. No, that one, <laughs> that one, they don't give, they don't put you out for that. Or did they put you out no. for that? No. No, nah, the they, I think they give you something to relax you, but uh, that's about it. Yeah, but uh, you know, you should get a full colonoscopy. And yeah. then they have me poop on this uh, uh, on a stick and send it back to them. No, they just had yeah. you poop on this. Like yeah, but not not because not because, really not because not because they were going to test you. They just okay, fetishes. That's all. <laughs> That's well, a little fetish. Eating, but I, yeah, Send me some I'm poop on a stick. You really should go, Phil. Think you know? of all the people on the podcast. Wow. Give a warning. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is... Uh, this uh, whole Bri, show is a warning. The thing is, Bree, and the problem is, if I may say so, is that we would forget, because we do this at night, that night, it's yeah. always morning somewhere. That's true. Right? And that people might be having breakfast while listening to us talking about poop. Now, we could do that, and people would then throw up all over their cereal, or we could talk about Trump, and people could throw up all throw over up their all cereal. cereal. And speaking of Trump, did you hear that Did you hear that Flynn was a uh, uh, recommendation for Flynn's sentencing came down tonight? Yeah, they said you know give what? him time served or whatever. To, uh, no. You, no. No, this is... This is no, the, they actually issued the memorandum to the court on the recommendation for se for sentencing, and basically, basically, they said that uh, he helped them out in a timely manner, right? And that uh, because of that, other people were cooperating with the investigation because of his timely coming forward. And and he's involved. He was involved in three different things, not just the Russians' interference in the election, but there were two other criminal uh, investigations that have been redacted in the memo released to the public. Yeah. Yeah, and Ooh. and they but well, he, then they also they also Trump. supposedly recommended. Hold on a second, I think I might have it here. Uh, zero to six months. Uh, uh, zero to six months. Yeah, zero was the was the downside number. Mm -hmm. uh, Look what that Michael did Flynn's to, uh, uh, substantial uh, assistant, special counsel Mueller, recommends no jail time for the former Trump advisor. That's what it says here. Yeah. Just trying to get uh, yeah. more guys to, there we go. to roll over. There we go. From Dubai, he has that. There we go. Okay. Now, uh, that came from 
Bernie. Uh, so none of it will affect Trump at all. Yeah. At all. Zero. What do you mean it won't affect Trump? It's and all these people are doing things underneath him. He doesn't have the he's not aware of what everybody's doing all the time. That's first of all. Second of all, he's the president. No, but the president. no, but 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 you don't understand. There's more. And to, third of all, these guys are getting uh, I convicted of lying on the stand because they're saying this about one thing, and then uh, there is some slight difference, and that's enough to uh, uh, prosecute them. You mean, and Trump didn't say one thing on Twitter and turn around and say something uh, Twitter, else? Twitter, Twitter is not. Uh, testimony. Oh, under oath. yes, it is. Not oh, yes, it is. It can be used no, as evidence not. against you because it is considered a record of what you have said. He's yes, the president. Absolutely. Doesn't matter. It matters. No, he will not, the president he will can't not be prosecuted. Any, he, he can fire Mueller anytime he wants if he wanted to. What's going to happen? What's going to happen to Trump is he's going to become an unindicted co conspirator in the Trump Tower Moscow debacle. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You guys never give up, do you? What will happen is around Christmas or New Year's, he will pardon people. And you'll be eating your Christmas turkey, and it'll be one of many stories because there'll be 5,000 other things going on, and, it will, and it'll just end. That's how it ends. I don't think it's going to be that easy. Don't think it's going to be that I don't, I don't think Cohen gets pardoned. Hmm? I don't think Cone gets no, pardoned. No, Cone's not getting pardoned at all. You know, nah, he's going to have to take it. Mike he's going to have to take it from Bubba. Although Mueller might suggest, as he did with Kelly, that because he gave substantial testimony, that he should be, uh, uh, you know, uh, Kelly uh, reduced sentence. Uh, 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 Kelly, yeah. No, oh, no, Mike Flynn. M Mike Flynn, excuse me, yeah. Mike Flynn. Uh, like Mike Flynn, they might give him, give him do the same thing for him. We don't know, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I think his son had a big mouth and got him taken down. Huh? Kelly, uh, not Kelly. Uh, Flynn's son uh, had a had a, a pretty big mouth and did some things and got him taken yeah. down. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, well, he. Anyway, I I here's it, let me things. let me bring up something here. Oh, uh, uh, Avenatti's not running anymore. I guess you're going to have to vote for someone else. I guess so. Uh, anyway, uh, this is the thing that really got me today. I'm watching BBC News. Why? There's just something refreshing about watching BBC News. It's like all of a sudden, you know, the, the whole focus is different. It isn't that Trump is permeating their news or, uh, uh, you know, a, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, saturating. Saturating the news dominating. cycle. Dominating the news cycle. You would love it here, Alex. <laughs> yeah, well, here, wait a minute. Let me finish what I was saying about BBC. So I'm watching the news at the BBC, and they have a story. What's their big story? What do you, Anybody know what their big story was today? Now, the, Brexit, it, it, Brexit. It wasn't Brexit. Brexit. That was their second story. First big story... The France riots. Yeah. Well, no, but yep. uh, but uh, that jackets. was uh, that was in there. You know, that was in the mix. Uh, this was a story that I didn't see MSNBC, I didn't see CNN, I didn't see Fox or anybody else covering. That Iran. Uh, Trump's, Trump's uh, triumph. At the no, G20. no, no. Iran fired a missile. Really? Yeah. Really. And really. Fair. Now, why wasn't that on the news here? Why, why is, is all this other shit so important and the fact that we're doing 24-7 coverage of a guy lying in a casket that we can't take out a moment to say, hey, you know, Iran fired a missile. That, to me, is a major story. It was a one-missile salute for Bush. The UN is moving for that. What? What, what, what did you say? What, what did you say the, I, I saw it as the Nick, uh, Nikki Haley photo. The UN is meeting to discuss that. Uh, but I don't know the news source. It's just online. Yeah, the but, missile that they fired was it fired at any? Well, they were testing. It just they, they were testing it. Testing. Yeah. They also they have a stealth. They have a new stealth uh, navy ship in Iran uh, that's supposedly going to give us trouble. Give the U.S. trouble. I don't know. Mm. But, but how many oars? But they the use? point is, the point is that that's 
this is a fairly big story. Why didn't we hear it here? Why didn't one of these stupid news networks do something about it? Because they were too busy showing, you know, a casket, or they were too busy thumping on Trump or whatever for, for his latest, uh, you know, misdeeds. I mean, why don't we get some real fucking news for crying out loud? Because you said it before, Trump sells. That's why we're getting wall-to-wall -wall coverage of Trump. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that, you know, some news organizations <laughs> would say, we're, you know, we're in this for the money, but we're going to make our money by not being in it for the money. You know what I'm saying? In other words, we're not going to have money dictate how much effort we put into the news and what stories we cover. We're also getting one-sided uh, one news, oh, like yeah. in Yemen, uh, you know, they don't talk about what the uh, Iranians are doing. They only talk about what the Saudis are doing. And, uh, you know, it's, it's almost as if they're trying to uh, control the, uh, the opinion. Well, what all I'm uh, saying is this was an important story. Why didn't we hear it? Why wasn't it on the 630 News? It would only take them 30 seconds. It would take 30 seconds away from the feel-good story at the end of the news that we could find out about this. Instead, no, we got to hear about little that. Bobby getting a Christmas present ahead of time because he's going to die or something. Yeah. It makes Americans feel better. I you mean, have to have that complete story. Complete waste of time. Yes, but yes, Renee. You know what I found is even more, as interesting as the missile because I didn't hear that one. Uh, Cutter, excuse me, a Qatar, anyway, you oh, want to pronounce it. Cutter, it's pronounced Cutter. Is isn't, with, isn't it the, uh, 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 Brie, isn't it called Cutter? Isn't that the way it's pronounced? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, they're withdrawing from OPEC. And about two months ago, I heard something that Saudi Arabia, China, and Russia and America want to withdraw from OPEC so that they can start the new OPEC for the new energy source, like natural gas and everything. Well, no, the reason, so, the reason why um, uh, Qatar is leaving OPEC is because they want to concentrate on things other than oil oh yeah okay. that was the reason they quit and they feel that uh, that all opec cares about is oil they want somebody that cares about natural gas that cares about other uh, sources of energy and that's why uh, they're pulling out of opec so well they're and then also natural gas what pardon they're heavy into natural gas yeah you know, we're selling natural gas. It's one of our biggest exports at the moment, natural gas, because we started a new contract with somebody. Yeah. It, so, Phil's a non-political thing, sort of. Have you been watching what's been happening up in the more, most northern route with the, all of the Russians and the Norwegians trying to, now that the passageway has opened up, that they're going to be moving things through the northern part of the planet that way? Is that uh, uh, due to, uh, was it uh, Crimea and the uh, Black no, Sea? Glo global warming and or ice caps oh. are melting and yeah. then old warming. sea routes. Yeah, yeah. I guess uh, the uh, French are uh, really supportive of the uh, climate change as well. That's why they're rioting in the streets. You know, uh, I, I, I believe that there are cyclical things that are happening on this planet. But uh, they're they're not due to they're not all due to man, you know. The the garbage is due to man, and that's killing our reefs. And uh, you know, but the, the United plastic States plastic is due to man. Yeah, you know uh, that's why I say that it's killing our reefs and uh, and our and our fish life. You know, even mm -hmm. uh, sharks. Uh, they're you know because they're finning them, and uh, and so forth. But you know this. There's a lot of people that think one way or another on climate change. I believe the world is flat, and uh, I'm going to continue to believe that. And if you walk to the edge, you'll fall off. Well, I believe that if the world was flat, all of the cats would be around the edge knocking things huh? off. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I looked for that uh, article on uh, my favorite website, Drudge, and I, I didn't find anything about the missile. See? And, you know, you... You would think that all I know uh, is that I heard I heard this story about the, the missile and that, in fact, uh, I think uh, some of the European nations or whatever were worried about this. They, they said Saudi Arabia was worried about it. Of course. Uh, you yeah. know, I mean, it was a story. 
And I think it's a more important story than some kid, you know, some kid's father coming home from the war and surprising him in school. No, no. Did you miss the guy, the little boy that got snowballed? You're now able to actually throw snowballs in a town again? Yeah, that was their last story on the news, which could have been replaced with, hey, did you know Iran shot a missile today? (laughs) Instead, we had to hear about a kid who can now throw snowballs in his community. Hey, did you see Bob Dole uh, in front of the casket? Yeah. Yeah. Did they dig him up to uh, be able to come to that uh, funeral? He's he not in. Uh, he's not in good shape. Uh, no, he, he didn't. He's, he didn't look, he's next. Well, he might be next. He didn't look. And he should have. At looking at him, he should have been first. Uh, you <laughs> yeah, know, I mean, true. really, it's true. Uh, and I don't want George Bush number uh, two to get any ideas because we're not going to go gaga over you, you little bastard. Your dad had quality. <laughs> Well, they need to close in the post office tomorrow. Well, but I here, mean. here's the deal. Here's here's the, the, here's the deal. I don't get. I, you know, I can't say I was ever a big fan of George Bush Senior. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, I didn't like him when he was president. I protested things that he was doing. Uh, I didn't like him. So, am I supposed to like him now? Is that what I'm supposed to do? Because uh, He's not as She's bad. As, no, because everybody who is talking about how good Bush was is saying it as a slam against Trump. That's right. It's oh, it's all code for. I mean, Trump has nothing to do with. Bush. No, no, but they said this was a time when we that, had yeah. presidents who were classy. You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, things right. like that, and they. I it, hated it, Reagan. Yeah. He yeah. So all great. of a sudden, he's looked upon as being a great. There'll be no mail delivery tomorrow. Yeah, I know. I know. I, to get my I want my fucking no mail. stock market either. Screw George <laughs> Bush. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, yeah, exactly. thank you very much, Phil. What? Holy shit. I didn't take enough money out of the United States dollar. That's for goddamn sure. My God, if we keep in the red zone and all of my investments, I'm oh, going to come out know, here and you, beat you, you stupid, you, Phil. Do you know how much money this fucking asshole has <laughs> cost me so far? God. Can I tell you the many thousands of dollars that I am right. out because of this hey, son of a bitch? You gamblers uh, <laughs> don't understand that there's no, you know, if you don't want to lose any principal, Where do you put keep... it in a federally insured oh, money market. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and that'll, money market, and, and that'll uh, stick it under your mattress. That'll get me. Yeah. Stick it under your mattress. That'll get me, one per- <laughs> that'll get me 1% a year. You know, but what I'm well, saying, you're taking all a chance. Is, hey, you know, no. there's ups and downs. No, I don't we gamble. Get the hell out of it. We should get our money you know, out of the I'm, United But States you know dollars. what? Uh, the, the same thing happened uh, years ago. It, it happened well, no, all you, the you time. You know why the stock market? And if market, you stay in it long enough, it'll come back. The stock market went down 800 points today. You know why it went down yeah, it went up 400 no, yesterday, no, though. No, no, but it, we all the gains we had last week, which is a good week, we've, we've lost, okay, in one day. In one shit day, happens. in one well, day, hold on, we can forget guy. about shit happens, Phil. I'm not well, talking about shit happens. Let me finish. Let me finish what I'm you, saying. You lost money. Let me money. finish what I'm saying right. here. It's not a fact. No, it's not a little bit of money. It's not a little bit of money, Phil. It's, <laughs> it's not, not a like little bit of money. I didn't say a little bit of money. <laughs> I, I said you lost money, bag. but when you when you <laughs> lose, wait a minute, wait a somebody else gains. The, you know the reason? Remember that. No, no. The only person that gains is is a stockbroker who, when you try to sell your stock, he makes money, and when you uh, buy stock, he makes money. But when you lose money, he doesn't lose anything. Anyway, let me of finish. Course. Let me that, finish what cool. I'm saying. The reason it went down today was because people suddenly woke up out of this drunken dream that they had out of Argentina, where the president said that, "Oh, we made a great deal with China and everything." To find out, he didn't make really any fucking deal with China. Uh, you know, it's it's just your news agencies uh, reporting. Wait a minute, wait a minute. No, uh, no. What deal? Reporting. What deal did he make with China, Phil? Well, uh, we were told. We were told. No, wait a minute. We were lied to. We were lied to by Donald Trump. You the no, you take lies from Donald Trump like uh, I like oh. I take sips of water. Go ahead. All right. Uh, at the at the summit, I believe that he had a meeting with uh, uh, President Xi. Yeah. Uh, they had a 90-day uh, tariff suspension. 
uh, uh, sort of a cooling off period. Or as I call it, the the Trump. Hey, 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 as hey, I hey, call it, wait a minute. Question. Or as I call you it, the answer you want to talk about. As I call it, the Trump cave in. Go ahead. All right. So there's going to be a 90 day uh, suspension of the uh, next set of tariffs. Uh, uh, they're uh, agreeing. They're agreeing to talk about uh, the uh, uh, the. What do you call it? The uh, the the stolen uh, uh, information that they take from us uh, and intellectual and the, property, intellectual property, uh, and yeah. uh, and and a number of other things. Oh I think no! It's, wait, it's, wait, it's here's how they describe you know, it. Do you, you want to hear how the Chinese have... described it? You want to hear how the Chinese described it? We ag- we agreed to look it. at. 100- I don't believe them. No, we looked agreed to look at a hundred different points. That's it. They just agreed to look at them. Well, that's what they're telling no, you. No, what's happening today is that everybody came away from this drunken stupor and suddenly realized what really happened in Argentina, and it wasn't the kind of thing that you feel great confidence in. So you're not confident. You don't know what went on. All I know is, you know, they had a discussion, and it's beginning uh, additional discussions to deal with these problems, which are problems that haven't been dealt with in a generation. And it's time that uh, that somebody stood up to the Chinese and said, look, you're going to have to respect our intellectual property. You're going to have to respect our patents. You're going to have to uh, stop dumping product in the United States. And, uh, you know, it's okay. it's about time. Okay. Trump, Trump is a hero. Okay. And, and, oh, and you're oh, a question hero. is, Bill, how is he going to make him do it? How is he going to make him do it? Well, his plan how is he going to make him do it? His plan is the tariffs. That's not going to make him do it. His the Chinese economy has uh, uh, cooled off greatly uh, at the same time that these tariffs were implemented. You could say no, it oh, has well, nothing. It work. had nothing. It, it no, it had nothing to do with the tariffs, Phil. It was cooling before that. Well, it ain't helping it now. But it's not that terrible either. They have other countries they can do business with without tariffs, like India, hey, which is a much bigger country. We are the biggest economy in the no, world. Uh, India is. Uh, yes. So, so India what are they is. doing? They're buying toilet paper. Am I, am I right? United? Wait a minute, Bree. Bree, am I right? India yeah. is a big economy. China, isn't it? China has a much bigger economy than us. Oh, yeah. yeah. But they need they our work. dollars. No. They need, they need our what do you mean? What do you mean they need, the need our dollars? We borrowed their. So. We borrowed not dollars not from a, them. They could do without the U.S. Trust me. We borrowed oh, yeah. dollars from them, Phil. China. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Uh, yes, you know, we met Renee. So the Iranian. Uh, let's see. They did launch a missile. And uh, Bree is correct. Uh, did the you UN, see that? Some Renee? people with the U.N. want to meet it. I, I googled it because oh. I couldn't find it on Reuters, mm. and I couldn't find it on BBC. But when I googled it, it said EU should sanction Iran over missile testing, and the United States warned them not to do it at two days beforehand, but they did it anyway. So this ought to be entertaining. Yeah. So I mean, why wasn't that on the news here? I don't know, but you know Fake what? News. Well, then that includes Fox and your America One and uh, whatever other Newsmax and all of them, because none of them Fox, reported it. Fox yeah. is not news. It hasn't won one award in the news genre. Except the highest ratings. Uh, yeah, uh, well, and Hillary well, won by three partisan, million voids. What does that get press. to? I'm sorry, Bree? We're, we're back to the partisan press. You know, if you look back historically, that's, uh, you know, every media outlet is, is attached to some partisan issue or whatnot. And Fox News, uh, Fox is a, uh, essentially it is the PR wing of the White House. It's and the there's nothing, balance. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's, that's the, they determined long ago, that's what their market is. That's what their target audience is. Um, so that's what they do. Uh, they you know, try to hide a, a little bit to set, you know, I don't know why, uh, because it's very clear that they are. Nixon, you know, if he had Fox News, would, would, have, would have fulfilled his term. Oh, yeah, you know? absolutely agree with that. Yes. You're, you're, that's a very good point you make, Bree. You betcha. Is that if, if Fox was around, Nixon would have remained through his full second term. Yeah, I think that's a good assumption to make. 
Um, and that's why Trump will survive this, in my opinion. It, it could well be, but on the other hand, Fox's ratings are starting to decline. And, and it's starting to get spread out among the other news services. So it could well be that Fox is not going to have that bully power they once had. Uh, Ailes was the... Uh, was the driving force behind well he was behind. a driving force and he certainly knew what he was doing okay yeah. in order to get ratings now that doesn't mean in order to do good news he just knew what to do to get ratings you know? yeah and uh, uh and in that respect ailes was a genius okay you heard it from me uh, yeah you <laughs> stone is I'm, I'm dying to see what happens with roger stone I'm just dying to see how this goes down. Well, I think he's hilarious. I love him. He's not a punk. Did you see? Did no. you did you see the documentary on him? Get me Roger Stone. Not yet. I'm waiting for a, a day that I'm stuck inside. <laughs> oh, by the way, I have a TV show to recommend. We binge watched a TV show which was on BBC America, and I missed it when it first came on, and everybody told me to watch it, and I didn't watch it. And I, we, we binge watched it. It is maybe one of the best shows I've seen in years. Killing Eve. I hear people love that. It is amazing. It Ooh. is. Ab the performances are amazing. The storyline is amazing. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's really, it's a great show. And it's, there are only eight episodes right now. If you have something like Hulu, you can watch it there. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Killing Eve. Um uh, the the two women in that show are just incredible, just incredible. Yeah, I yeah, liked Sandra Ho when she was in Arliss. She was really good, and she was funny, and she yeah. played this you know the straight person really well. well the other woman, so, uh, Comer, is her name. What what, what what's her name there? Uh, 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 Jody Comer. Jody Comer. She plays a psycho. She plays the best psycho since. Hannibal Lecter. Ooh. I mean, she just, she's amazing. She is just amazing. Wait a minute. Is is Jack going to have a show? Run an old show, he says. Okay. Uh, he's right. having problems. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. Yeah. We'll catch him tomorrow. Yeah, if he gets everything. Jody Comer. Yeah, Jody Comer. I don't know who she is. Well, she was in a show called The White uh, Queen. On I didn't stars. see that one either. Oh yeah, white. Yeah, I remember. She, but I didn't see she played it. Elizabeth. Sounds she, racist to but, me. But she it plays the best psycho I've ever seen on television. Anywhere, anywhere. Mm -hmm. Even better than Hannibal Lecter. I mean, she is just such a psycho, and yet she's a she's a hired killer. Uh, uh, it's on Hulu, right? It's on Hulu. You can watch That's it what? there. Uh, you know, it can also be. Oh, good. speaking of Hulu. Yeah. Um, I, I watch, uh, occasionally the clips from Sarah Silverman's show will come on YouTube. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and I like them. I don't know if you, you've I don't know. The whole movies. shows are not that good. I, the I, clips. I, yeah. Some of the clips it's not one of the things I go seeking out necessarily, you know. But, but here's one of the funny things. She did this skit with, she was playing basketball in order to determine what the one true religion was. And this clip made it onto YouTube, and I watched it, and I thought it was funny. And I went to show it to someone, and they took it. It had been taken down. Now all her other clips are up, but that clip they took down. That's interesting. How about the one with the bloody head? Yeah, no, that's, no, that's not Kathy. her. That was Kathy Griffin, you know, who's a bitch so anyway. So I don't give a shit. So they took down, huh? We'll yeah. have to look that up. Anyway, this was on yeah, YouTube. This Anyway, I got to go. Here. I got to go. Uh, we're going to play a rerun of Jack's show because he can't get his equipment working. What else is new? Uh, that sounds personal too much. Tell him to take Viagra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so we'll, 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 we'll take care of it from this side and get it on. Uh, listen, everybody, I thank you so much for having joined us tonight. Uh, this has been a, a pleasure as usual, and we will do it again uh, in, 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 in tomorrow how about that let's all get back I, together again tomorrow night okay it'll be feel free tomorrow <gasps> i got a banquet to go to. thank you vernon thank you renee oh, thank boy. you phil thank you Bree. thank you jeff thank you kevin thank you tony everybody wave goodbye okay
Bye-bye, one and all. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, that's our uh, that's our uh, group for tonight. And uh, let me unceremoniously uh, get rid of them here. And uh, 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 Jack Bishop will be a rerun tonight because, well, he's uh, he's having problems getting his equipment working. What what? A, it doesn't sound right, does it? Well, anyway, uh, we'll uh, play a rerun from last week, and we'll see you again. Uh, let's see here tomorrow night. Uh, another interview with uh, Jack Garfine and another citizen panel. I'll see you then. In the meantime, right after Damian Chaplin, tomorrow night, uh, he's here at 9.30 and then tomorrow night at 10. I'll be here same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you happen to see her, tell her to hobble over here and tell her I love her. Okay, bye-bye.